as we go, there's little tips and tricks for being out in the backcountry overlanding. And you can cook on these Coleman stoves, which are amazing. So with a fridge, you can prep. There were a lot of spices. Are right there? Sugar, um, oregano. oregano. If you do a little bit of prep at home, like we cut up the steak, season it, and just put it in the fridge, you can prepare a week of food and store it. Chopped garlic, I always bring a big container of garlic, but chop it at home so you don't have to deal with it here, although it's not that hard. You're not going to run a refrigerator, and you're going to run an ice chest. Don't fill your ice chest the morning of, fill it the night before with ice. It's called charging your ice chest. The insulation needs to be cold in your ice chest. Otherwise you will lose your ice by the second or third day. The problem with propane is that you can't see it in the daylight and you gobble it up in the winter because of pressure. So in the winter, it's best to use white gas, white gas stoves if you can. So another thing too, with Coleman stoves or any stove that's propane, there's two types of heads. There's the head that has all the little pinholes in it like a Coleman, and then there's the head that has the individual flames that kind of pop out. There's usually eight between eight and ten little flames. Anything with the pinholes is superior because it's harder for it to blow out in the wind and you can actually get a lower heat on it without it going out. Right now, Josie's cooking on the lowest setting possible, barely any gas being used because we use the heads with the pinholes in them, and that's most Coleman's have yeah. And then the butter. Don't forget the butter. Butter, hey, butter is pretty critical. Gordon Ramsay would be proud. <laughs>